I think some of the effects of excluding fire from these systems are, are many fold. Uh, we could talk about wide ranging air quality degradations, episodes of smoke impacts from wildfires on multi-state areas and, and years of drought are, are becoming increasingly more frequent. We see the unnatural accumulation of fuels as we've kept fires out and they no longer clean up fuels on the forest floor or in various different kinds of ecosystems. We see the, the increasing threat to people where they live. The, the fuel threats around wildland urban interfaces are becoming more serious. Studies have shown that there used to be 23 trees per acre of ponderosa pine in some areas around Flagstaff. Recent studies in 1992 have shown that that number is now 850 trees per acre. Now you can just get a mental image of 23 trees per acre versus 850, and you can imagine the crown fire potential that exists in those dense and what we call dog hair stands of ponderosa pine today. So when there's a lightning strike, when there's a drought in northern Arizona, these fires are extremely difficult to control for the firefighter. They're threats to the firefighter's life and welfare. They're threats to the urban wildland interface around Flagstaff. And there is a better way, and the better way is to reduce the density of those stands in whatever mechanism makes sense before the drought and before the lightning so that the firefighter can be more successful. The neat thing about working in fire now is that the agencies are working together. Um, the Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, Bureau of Land Management, Forest Service, Park Service, the Department of Defense is getting interested. The Bureau of Indian Affairs has been burning for quite some time. Other agencies, not private entities like Nature Conservancy and different conservation groups are getting into it as well. Plus, um, just plain individuals who, like ranchers, who realize the value of burning. I've been linking with, with agencies and saying they want to be included in some of the burning. Fires are a kind of force of nature that it's simply not a matter of if they will occur, but only when. And fires will occur no matter what technology we have in place. It will happen. People will be careless with fire no matter how hard we try and prevent the careless human caused fire. So there will be fires, and that's why, again, it's so important to follow the caveat of everyone planning for the, the when of fire occurrence. We think our prescribed fire strategy is a good one because we can invest a more modest sum of money up front in prescribed fires that might cost perhaps 50 to 100 to $200 an acre. Much smaller investment can give a much larger return that will reduce our future wildfire suppression expenditures. <laughs>
uh, has been doing the bulk of the prescribed burning. burning. Uh, it was largely on the, the uh, strength of arguments brought by wildlife biologists in the United States, in the southeastern United States, um, that burning really picked up. Douglas Votolina has been with the Florida Division of Forestry for over 25 years. If land is in prescription, in other words, it's burnt every three to five or whatever number of years the prescription is, an occurrence of ignition of a wildfire will be less severe. Okay? And if we increase prescribed burning, well, wildfire size and intensity decreases. I won't say it doesn't occur, it's just the intensity decreases and suppression efforts are easier. Uh, last year we burned pretty close to 4,000 acres in cities, which included alongside homes. If we didn't do it, the arsonists would do it. Six or eight weeks after we have a fire, it's green again. And that's what the animals feed on. That's why wildlife biologists use burning in Florida as one of their major tools. Everybody's working as a team saying, listen, you've got to, you're going to smell smoke in the air. You've got to smell smoke in the air, otherwise you're going to have catastrophic fires. Dennis Haddow is a leading authority on managing the smoke from prescribed fire. Talking about putting significantly more fire on the land for a number of reasons that uh, people have heard about, and that will create a lot more smoke. Uh, and this is something we're very concerned about. We're concerned about smoke for a number of reasons, because of the way it might impact public health, or firefighter health, or safety, or even visibility. There are definitely trade-offs between the smoke emitted from wildfire and the smoke emitted from prescribed fire. When we ignite prescribed fires, we watch the meteorology so that the wind will not blow the smoke towards communities or we don't burn during times of inversion. We can do a very good job of scheduling our prescribed fires for times when the meteorology is optimum to minimize the impact that smoke has. Well, we cannot do that with wildfire. Now, if you've traveled uh, a thousand miles in a station wagon with a back seats full of children to see the Grand Canyon, and you get there and it's full of smoke from either a wildfire or prescribed fire, you're probably not going to be very happy. But at the same time, we do remember that, uh, or must remember that smoke is a natural part of the ecosystem. Fire is a natural part of the ecosystem, and that smoke is natural. With a diverse 25-year background in resource management with the U.S. Forest Service, Sue Vapp now is a team leader in the National Park Service. Well, we've been asked as managers to take care of the resource for the American public. And to me, fire is part of the whole picture that we need to look at, no matter what we're doing in terms of resource management. If fire was a part of the past, then fire needs to be a part of the future. I, I think it's hard to say that there's a right or a wrong kind of fire. However we look at it, I don't think the terminology is so important as the philosophy behind it, that fire is part of the ecosystem and there are ways in which we will use it. If, if we have the chance to use prescribed fire, we have a little more control. We have an idea about what's going to happen with the weather. We have an idea of how dry the fuels are, where the winds are coming from, what kind of folks we have available, what kind of equipment is available. So it's a little more planned we can have all the resources in place and try to do our best with what we get that day for weather, winds. Whereas when we get a lightning storm in August, um, it may not be the most ideal conditions for us to look at that fire and talk about resource benefits. We do need to have a respect for fire. We do need to, be, to have some fear. But we also need to have on that respect for fire to know that there's some things that it can do for us. Well, one of the things that we're hoping that we can do by um, making a change in the landscape is to perhaps minimize some of the large catastrophic fires that we've had in the last 10, 15 years. Wise stewardship of our natural environment goes beyond the restoration of fire. The complexity of our ecosystems will constantly present new lessons to our scientists. We do not have all the answers, but it is the responsibility of our managers to apply the lessons as they are learned. Fire use is one of the keys to ecosystem health, 
that we hold in our hand. The return of fire to our landscapes should be celebrated as when a drenching rain ends a drought. So when you see or hear news of a prescribed fire, please understand all the good that it can do for the people, plants, and animals across the nation. Thank you.